Time now for the week that was. Let's take a look at the top stories that made headlines across the globe this week. Now, President Mohamed Buhari this week unveiled newly designed 1,000 Naira, 500 Naira and 200 Naira notes. The unveiling of the new banknotes took place in Abuja before the commencement of the weekly cabinet meeting where the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN Governor Mr. Godwin Amefele, said the policy will help control inflation and assist in the fight against corruption. The policy to redesign the legal tender announced on October 26, 2022, comes almost two decades since the last redesign of the Naira. It will take effect from December 15, 2022, while the new and existing currencies will remain legal tender and circulate together until January 31, 2023. It's a major milestone in our efforts to solve the numerous challenges facing the management of our legal tender currency with the unveiling of the three redesigned denominations of 1,000 Naira, 500 Naira, and 200 Naira banknotes. I'd like to talk about the need for the currency design, its benefits, the features of the new banknotes, and the unwavering support of Mr. President to the Central Bank of Nigeria. As you are all aware, currency management is a key function of the Central Bank of Nigeria as enshrined in Section 2, Subsection B of the CBN Act 2007. Indeed, the integrity of a local te currency tender, the efficiency of its supply, as well as its efficacy in the conduct of monetary policy are some of the hallmarks of a great central bank. In recent times, however, currency management in Nigeria has faced several challenges that have continued to grow in scale and sophistication with unintended consequences for the integrity of both the Central Bank of Nigeria and the country. Some of these challenges primarily include First, a significant hoarding of banknotes by members of the public with statistics showing that 2.72 trillion naira out of 3.26 trillion naira currency in circulation as of June 2022 was outside the vaults of our commercial banks across the country and supposedly held by members of the public. These statistics shows that 84.71% of our currency in circulation are outside the vaults of commercial banks, with only 15.29% at the central bank and the commercial bank's vaults. Second, is the worsening shortage of clean and feed bank notes with attendant negative perception of the CBN and increased risk of risk to financial stability. Third, there is increasing ease by criminals and risk of counterfeiting evidenced by several security reports received by the security agencies, the CBN, and the government. The benefits of the currency redesign to Nigerian economy are enormous, given that A, this policy will help to control inflation as the exercise will bring the hoarded currency back into the banking system, thereby making monetary policy more effective. B, it will also help with better design and implementation of monetary policy, as we would have much more accurate data on money supply and our monetary aggregates. <clears throat> Third, we believe that this exercise will help in increasing financial inclusion moving towards a more cashless economy and ensuring greater formalization of the Nigerian economy. D, the currency redesign would assist in the fight against corruption as the exercise would rein in the higher denomination used for corruption and the movement of such funds from the banking system could be tracked easily by the relevant security agencies. It is now almost 20 years since the last major redesign of our local currency. This implies that the Naira is long overdue.
to wear a new look. A cycle of banknote redesign is generally aimed at achieving specific objectives, including, but not limited to, improving security of banknotes, mitigating counterfeiting, preserving the collective national heritage, controlling currency in circulation, and reducing the overall cost of currency management. As is known, our local laws, specifically the Central Bank of Nigeria Act of 2007, grants the Central Bank of Nigeria the power to issue and redesign the Naira. In line with this power, the Central Bank Governor approached me earlier in this year to seek my permission to embark on a currency redesign project. I considered all the facts and reasons presented before me by the Central Bank. There was an urgent need to take control of currency in circulation and to address the holding of Naira banknotes outside the banking system. The shortage of clean and fit banknotes in circulation and the increase in counterfeiting of high denomination Naira banknotes. It is on this basis that I gave my approval for the redesign of the 200 Naira, 500 Naira, and 1,000 Naira banknotes. Meanwhile, Nigeria's central bank governor, Godwin Mefele, says there were attempts in the past to resist the redesign of the country's currency, but that President Mohamed Buhari refused to give in. Mefele said this while answering questions from State House correspondents after the unveiling of the redesigned Naira, which he says cannot be counterfeited. A rice correspondent, Amaka Ude Walker, reports. President Mohamed Buhari unveiling Nigeria's redesigned legal tender, the Naira. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefele explains that Nigeria should have been redesigning its currency every five to eight years, but that it was never done and he hopes that going forward, the CBN would begin to do so. He also says previous attempts to redesign the currency was resisted and sabotaged until now that President Buhari supported the bold step. The Naira is long overdue to wear a new look. A cycle of banknote redesign is generally aimed at achieving specific objectives, including, but not limited to, improving security of banknotes, mitigating counterfeiting. I want to hope that after this, after the event of today, the Central Bank of Nigeria can just take it as part of its programs to see to it that every within five to eight years, the currencies are redesigned and reissued. It is because mainly the central bank should be able to have control, full control, of the size of currency in circulation. That is the sole mandate of the central bank of Nigeria. In the past, I have to confess, that attempts by the Central Bank of Nigeria to redesign and reissue currencies have been resisted. And that is the reason I also read in my speech that is only a president of the esteem and stature of President Muhammad Buhari that could have done this. A mafia is asking Nigerians not to be fixated on discussions that the new policy is targeted at anyone. He says the CBN would ensure that its regulations on the size and volume of currency in circulation is properly regulated going forward. We will indeed be more uh, intense in ensuring that the provisions of the law and our CBN regulations about the size and volume of currencies that people can hold or can carry or can withdraw, that we would insist that this is um, um, don't go in for following the redesign and issuance of this note. We will go forward to insisting that cashless will be nationwide. 
we will restrict the volume of cash that people will withdraw over the counter. The Apex Bank also says its cashless policy will now take full effect and that Nigerians must be prepared to focus more on running a cashless economy. Between October 26th and January 31, 2023, we believe that is over 100 days. Like the president has said, if you have cash, it should not take you more than 100 days to be able to deposit it in your bank. There is no local government where you don't have um, um, uh, agent bankers that can do this on our behalf. So it's as good as saying we have over one million points or branches of banks all over the country where you can deposit and take your cash to. Amir Fela says with its agent distribution being more than a million across the nation, there is no excuse by Nigerians to say that time is short for the exercise. He also speaks on the security features of the new national currency. He boasts that the currency cannot be counterfeited. These currencies, these notes, they cannot be counterfeited because of the security features in them. Nobody can counterfeit them. What you could only find will be people making photocopies of these notes. If you follow due process to check the um, authenticity of a currency, take them through the UV lights, you will find that these currencies can never be counterfeited. The best you will find is photocopies of these currencies. And that's why we call, it, we call, them, call them counterfeit. But what, you will, what I'm trying to say in essence is this. To reduce that incidence of counterfeiting or photocopying, that is why we're saying the CBN must now, without waiting, every five to eight years, must redesign and reissue these notes. The redesigned currency was earlier scheduled for unveiling on the 15th of December, but was later brought forward by the central bank to today. No explanation was given. Amaka Ude Walker, Arise News. All right, Steve, of course, you've been a huge proponent of this right from the get-go, as we all should be for uh, the merits of it, you know, inflation control, um, financial inclusion, measures against counterfeiting. These are merits. Yeah. So far, the disappointments around it have just been what the... Dis I'm not my disappointment. <laughs> I don't really care. Uh, I've been around what they look like, you know. And, of course, the cost of the exercise on uh, other levels. Um, but merits definitely yeah. outweigh uh, other concerns, I would say. Absolutely. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying about, you know, the first two days after the unveiling and the barrage, you know, of comments from, you know, um, the public, the public, naysayers, you know, and stuff uh, about is this actually like wearing a new look or is this uh, putting on a new color, you know, on the on the old notes. Uh, but I think that we should, you know, cut uh, the CBN some flag, actually, um, uh, for those who uh, know what's going on and who understand the game. Uh, I think what we should, cons you know, what we should uh, focus, on. focus on, you know, and align with them um, will be the security measures, you know, the added security measures on the new notes, you know. Uh, and, and to redesign, whether you like it or not, yes, it might look like, you know, it's coloration and everything. But then I think in terms of sizing, it's different from, from the old ones. And then the new features that are there, I'm not too sure about what the CBN is hammering on, the CBN governor, uh, about the fact that uh, nobody can ever counterfeit them. What's a counterfeit? Whether you photocopy it or you, you know, a counterfeit is the fake version of the original. And people will try that. You shouldn't expect that. Uh, they that they won't. Exactly. The only thing that you say is that it will be uh, a lot easier to detect counterfeiting. Not to say that it can never be counterfeited. Even if you make a photocopy, you can say that because you know, but then if you are spending it in uh, uh, Igbo or in uh, you know in a village in Zamfara or a village in Osho State or in Ugo State, people won't understand. They will just know that oh, it's a new. This is the new color. This is the new features. How many people will be that educated, you know, to be able to detect counterfeiting? And it is usually research shows that is usually the first few months after a redesign that people that try people to spend, it. you know, the counterfeiting. So what CBN should do is to make sure that at their own back end, uh, using the instrumentality of the banks, et cetera, to make sure that people are properly briefed 
and they watch out, you know, for those that will be counterfeited. Don't say it's photocopy. You will find stuff like that. But like you said, Abby, um, we should comment CBN. Uh, because this is, a, uh, this is their mandate. It's a constitutional duty. They've waited for this long. And we understand the politics that uh, Mr. Bifili also referred to. That could possibly suggest that throughout, you know, um, uh, during the, the administration of uh, uh, President Yaradua, late President Yaradua and President Jonathan, maybe there were attempts to design the Naira. And then he said resistant. that it was frustrated. But of course, nobody would try that um, with Ebuhari who has done it before, if you recall, in 1984. And the gist at that time was that even his, his um, chief, uh, uh, chief of staff, Idiabo, you know, was not even aware that it was just between him and the central bank governor because of the uh, sensitivity that he attached to it. So uh, we commend the fact that President Buhari, you know, uh, agreed with this one. But let's begin to see the gains. 84% uh, of circulation of uh, currency circulation outside of the banking control is bad news for any economy. And this is what the CBN, you know, is trying to control. But then after you have redesigned it, people will go into New Year, um, people will sp spend new Naira, but what will be the value of the Naira in their pocket, whether they are carrying it in their pocket the or they're question. using it, absolutely. Uh, so yes, uh, yours is to uh, control the monetary policies and every other thing, but then what will be the value of the Naira in your pocket, in my pocket. Which at the end of the day is the most important part. <laughs> and that's it? what Mr. Emifili, you know, should focus on. It is Absolutely. important. Moving on, a quest that began in 2019 has finally yielded results with the release of gas accompanied with crude oil. Gombe and Bauchi states have joined the list of states with oil reserves in Nigeria. Arise Business and Energy Correspondent only Sunday was present at the official flag off of the Kolmani Integrated Project in Boucher State, which had President Muhammad Buhari and other senior government officials in attendance. Initially awarded to Shell and Chevron in 1993, oil prospecting license 809 and 810 gave way to the exploration and drilling of the Kolmani River. Both companies had initially reported sub-commercial discovery of hydrocarbons in their blocks until the latest efforts. Almost three decades after, prominent Nigerians, experts and stakeholders in Nigeria's oil and gas sector are gathered here to celebrate the discovery of hydrocarbons in commercial quantity in Nigeria's northern region and to flag off the Kolmani Integrated Project. This discovery had emanated from our charge in NPC to re-strategize and expand its oil and gas exploration footprints to the frontier basins of Anambra, Dahomey, Sokoto, Benue Trao, Chad, and Bida basins. With NNPC as the concessionaire, Africa Oil Field Limited Consortium as a strategic partner for the integrated development of OPL 809 and 810. This discovery has enabled the understanding of the frontier basins in the reef system from Nigeria with potentials for further large-scale finds. Our teams are currently engaged in several exploratory activities and have commenced re-entry into the Chad Basin with the recent assurance of a claim and security situation. The Nigerian government says the project has attracted over $3 billion in investments for the first phase, despite the low global appetite for fossil energy investments. The commencement of drilling of coal money fields, which could hold as much as 1 billion barrels of crude oil, will significantly contribute in boosting our oil reserves and ensuring a continuous energy sufficiency. For the president of the Senate, the discovery of oil isn't enough. The mistakes made in the Niger Delta must be avoided. I'm also worried because what has been happening in the Niger Delta with the 13% derivation, or maybe the application, or maybe in some cases misapplication of the resources of the NDDC would have negative impact all the time. And this is something for this part of the new oil-bearing states to learn from. Our 13% derivation 
I think maybe we should have a constitutional review. How do you apply the 13% derivation? The discovery of hydrocarbons in the north has been greeted with skepticism over the years. Mark Anuku, an engineer working on the project, attempts to clear any doubts. This is a success. I worked in Air Delta for almost 20, 25 years. This is a success. I'm a well engineer. Three wells drilled back to back. You have long footage of hydrocarbon. This is, this is success, a very big success for the country. There is hydrocarbon here. I've seen it, I've tested it, I've flowed the well, so there's, there's hydrocarbon here. History making here in the north and in Nigeria. My take is, you've just spoken with the engineer, Mark. Science doesn't lie, facts are sacred. That should be okay. The opportunity across Nigeria are enormous. There's no section of Nigeria that doesn't have what to offer. Even in terms of hydrocarbon, the fact that we found hydrocarbon today proved the fact that there are going to be oil everywhere. The challenge is not finding oil. The challenge is how do you monetize the oil? The monetization of the oil, this is a landlocked area. It requires a significant innovation and creativity. And that is what NMPC has helped to bring together so that we can do a development in situ. This is very innovative. And we are developing an industrial hub where you're going to refine the oil here to combat gas to power and combat gas to chemical, in particular fertilizer. Situated in Nigeria's troubled northeastern region, the government is assuring operators of massive security and cooperation with the host communities. Being an integrated project, the first phase will include an oil refinery with the capacity to process 120,000 barrels of crude oil, a gas processing plant with 500 million standard cubic feet of gas capacity, a power plant with 300 megawatts capacity and a fertilizer plant able to produce 2,500 tons of fertilizer. From Komani in Bauchi State, Onyi Sunday, Arise News. Now, in a related development, the Senate Ad Hoc Committee investigating oil theft and its impact on production in the state's revenue says Nigeria has lost $2 billion to oil theft from January till date and that this theft occurs offshore. Senate correspondent Georgina Undukwe Isanyika tells us more. Officials say Nigeria's crude oil production fell from 2.13 million barrels per day in January 2020 to 1.38 million in July 2022. Incessant oil theft and pipeline vandalism has been blamed for this. The ad hoc committee assigned to investigate this situation has recommended that online monitoring systems be deployed at flow stations and terminals to check the movement of illegal vessels. Should expedite all processes of procurement for NUPRC to ensure immediate deployment of an online real-time monitoring system by the Commission across all upstream oil and gas production platforms to ensure accurate measure of production volume by the producers. Curtailing crude oil types should be a collective responsibility, thereby well-meaning members of the public must, encourage, must be encouraged to report illegal activities and transactions. The chairman of the ad hoc committee also raised concerns about the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited not allowing agencies to perform their regulatory functions, a clear disregard of the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act. And the committee also frowned at the presence of two regulators at the crude oil export terminals when the PIA has clearly designated limits of the two petroleum regulators, respective oversight. NNPC is not giving freedom to those two committees that were set up, the NUPRC and the one for the downstream. That the issue of having multiple agencies at, um, 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 supervising, um, supervising uh, it can easily be stopped when technology has been fully deployed. Meanwhile, the Senate has also passed for second reading a bill seeking to upgrade the existing mobile force training camp in Baranu State to a special forces training academy. The bill, sponsored by Senator Ali Ndume, highlights the need for specially trained police officers to address the current insecurity in the country rather than resorting to military force. So if this establishment, even though under the police, will have a standing budget, will have a desired output, will have the ability to provide training to other institutions. Instead of establishing, we have many police training schools. Why can't we just pick one and modernize it and change the curriculum for the training? 
so that of course maybe we can now have it as a model. A bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Police Special Forces and the Nigerian Police Special Force Training School and its governing council and for other related matters there with 2022. Second reading taken. Deputy Senate President Ovi Omagege, who presided over plenary, referred the bill to the Committee on Police Affairs to report back in four weeks. Georgina Ndukwezaika, Arise News. All right, Steve, from great news to not so good news. So let's <laughs> start with the great news. I, I'll get the commissioning of the first oil well. I mean, of course, in, in, the, in North Eastern Nigeria, that's a win for North Eastern Nigeria and the country at large. Of course, we, you know, after many years of exploration, the Chad Basin, we can speak of the uh, Gongola Basin, and um, 120,000 barrels a day will make a lot of difference in meeting the country's OPEC quota as well. Absolutely, it will. I mean, it's success without a doubt, you know. Uh, a lot of people might want to politicize it. A lot of people have wondered why are you looking for oil, you know, in the north. And, you know, some people have derisively said, you know, in the desert, you know. But then I look at what has happened 29 years after, you know. So it's success, um, even though it's coming at a time that the old world uh, seems to be against, you know, fossil fuel and everything. But then we know that, you know, there is a lot of politics even in the, you know, in the call for that. Um, Russia and Ukraine war has shown that nothing is sacrosanct, you know. Who would have imagined that even Europe, some parts of Europe will return to coal, you know, because of what is happening. So we commend uh, the government uh, for what has happened. Uh, but of course, uh, the other thing will be to uh, enjoin them to be mindful of the curse of the black gold. You know, uh, I like uh, the report from, you know, was it from Oye Sunday? Sunday? Absolutely. Saying that, you know, the, the, the errors that were made in the Niger Delta, let's hope that it will not be repeated uh, in the north. And, and, and that's been mindful of the curse of the black, you know, gold. Uh, a lot you of don't people... see opportunity in the wrong way. <laughs> in the wrong way, absolutely. And, and, and we hope that it won't uh, for them make some governors in that part of the country uh, too lazy as to, you know, just rely on, you know, going to Abuja for a share, you know, of the windfall. Um, again, uh, the security concern that will trail all this is also key, something important that they have to look at. And look at what Zamfara has become. The main reason why Zamfara, you know, is now uh, like a hotbed, you know, for a banditry and, 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 and terrorists, etc., is because of the natural you know, uh, resources there. Now that you have oil in Bauchi, in Gombe, um, we just have to be careful. We just have to have our eyes wide open, and you know, to the threats. And operations around it as well. Absolutely. I think that cannot even be debated. It can be. It can be. But congratulations to Nigeria. Yes, congratulations yes. To, to those two states and the North, Northeast, which is in dire need, you know, of development, you know, after all the years yeah. of, uh, of the locals that they have, you know, experienced. So congrats to them. And of course, to um, Georgina's report on oil theft, oh. it's a reminder we never really like to hear. Uh, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> they, While they we were, celebrate they that. They were basically stating the obvious, actually. Uh, $2 billion since January. Uh, what I would have loved to hear uh, would be, um, have we made any appreciable impact since the Tompolo-led uh, government intervention? You don't know. The oil theft is real and everything. But then let's have a month by month analysis so that we know whether it is worth it if yeah. we are making progress is if it's measurable going, in any way it has to be measurable it? yeah otherwise what will be the point of the billions of naira you know that we're that we're giving out costly <laughs>